me. Day 51 of 66 days in a row of hand reading is about to begin. Let's do this. So what I thought about was um, I wanted to take a look at some hands where I face donk bets, right? So I got this uh, filter going on for the flop right here. But I want to make sure that I see, um, uh, you know, the hands that definitely went to showdown. Add to the filter, hands that went to showdown. All right, so 59 hands where we faced a donk bet. Pretty sweet there. Um, tons on the button. Let's go to an earlier position, um, like the MP possibly, where we can see uh, maybe where the small blind, so somebody who has kind of a wider pre-flop calling range, might be donk leading into us. And then tomorrow, maybe we'll do a cutoff or a button hand. Oh, you can see I've lost a lot of money on the cutoff here facing some donk raises, so that might be interesting. Might be able to find a good losing hand, um, see why I lost so much money in a given pot. But as you can see, we have this filtered by, or sorted by River Action. And we've already done this hand right here. So the next best hand, where it looks like we got some good um, uh, pre-flop and flop aggression, and then some passivity, turn in River. Let's do this. Alrighty, so we see this hand right here. We've got a full ring table. We're in the MP. Um, oh, before we get to that, we've got to, of course, whip out Flopzilla and the uh, Villains Range PDF right here. So, first up is the hand that we're using. 875-90371. Uh, uh, cool. What happens here? All right, we get to raise first in. Lovely. One caller. And two callers. Let's see who our in, a villain ends up. So this RJ Captain ends up being um, our uh, donking uh, villain in this one. So we're going to range his range. Oh, yeah, of course, because it's the villain. We won't think about Captain Hook right now. But we'll take a look at RJ Captain. So first off, what are we raising with? We're, we're doing the full hand reading on the villain's range. But we got to assign all ourselves a little something. Actually, no because it'll take away from the combo countdown here. We'll start with his big blind over calling range. As you can see, we got one caller. He only needs 21% equity. Um, who knows how this player thinks I only have two hands on, on the player, but let's give him probably, let's start at a 50%, a pretty wide calling range, just because we don't know enough about him. Um, we just don't know enough. Let's just let's just give him a very standard, very narrow three betting range of queens are better and ace king. I think jacks we can often see. Um, if he's unknown to me, I'm unknown to him. Same thing with Captain Hooks. I mean, he could be unknown to Captain Hooks as well. He might not know who he's up against, so he might. Um, in the very first hand at this table, I guess it says two hands, but first one I've seen, maybe he posted a, uh, maybe he posted a blind on the prior hand and under the gun or something. I don't know. But anyway, he doesn't know us. We don't know him. So let's give him the tightest possible three betting range. Now, when it comes to his calling range, every one of the pocket pairs up through jacks looks good to me. Possibly 6-5, probably not 5-4, but possibly 6-5. I see a lot of people calling 5-4 suited. Let's get rid of those jacks. Let's go um, Let's go on the eights. Suited eights are better. Let's not give him this wide on the off suits. Um... I don't really want to give him every offsuit king either. Maybe we can go here. Nah, let's not. This seems pretty good. I mean, this is 49% of hands he's calling with. It could be wider. I just don't want to go super ultra wide. Are guys calling that wide? 7, 4, 9, 5? Nah, possibly. He doesn't know us. He only needs 21% equity. Yeah, we'll give him this wide. We won't go to all of these. Maybe the suited queens. That's 43%. Okay. If he's calling 10 6, he's calling jack 6. Okay. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jack 7, jack 8, jack 7. Let's just give him one more. Jack 6 suited. Okay. So, 43% calling range. It's pretty darn wide. But hopefully, with my uh, flop aggression and then turn in river, how we play that hand and whatever the board comes out, hopefully, we can narrow him a bit here. But we're going to start with a rather wide range versus an unknown. 576 combos, 43%. In the MP, open two, three big blinds. What's the position of the caller? First caller, uh, MP caller. 
and villain big blind overcalls. Unknown villain big blind overcalls. All right. So we did open in the MP right here. Uh, it's probably kind of a, a wider range. Let's give myself queens. Let's do that. Um, not a wider range. I mean, it's like a 14% range. I could go, I mean, I could give myself even something like King Jack suited. But let's stick with a pocket pair. I like the pocket pairs. Everybody does. I mean, I could give myself aces or kings, but let's go with kind of a... a, a, a the lower end of the top pocket pairs, we can say. 976, heart, spade, heart. So, oh, well, actually, before this hits right here, if we do have a hand like pocket queens versus such a wide range, you can see we're a 77% favor. So before that flop hits, we're going to win 77% of the time. So if our opponent has this wide of a range and we have the option to get it in pre-flop, we are totally getting it in, of course. Because currently, we beat everything Everything in his hand, I mean, he doesn't have aces or kings. Sure, he has an ace or a kink in his hand, possibly, which could outflop, outturn, outriver us. But, you know, as it stands, our hand just rocks if it is queens versus this range. 76%. So on the flop was 976, heart, spade, heart. So on this flop, you could see just, just looking at his range, he is mid card heavy. Tons of fives, sixes, and sevens, and eights, and nines, even tens in his range. Look at all those in his range. This range hits this board 48% of the time. So half of the time, he ain't folding. He's sticking around with at least some kind of a draw. Sure, he does have sets in his range. Super strong hands, of course. He even flops straights, right? 8-10 is in here. Um, well, we could look at the straight right there. 8-10 and the 8-5. He flopped those sets. Uh, nine sevens and sixes all in his range two pairs even plenty of two pair hands i mean this guy on this board is not folding um so if we do have a good hand especially a hand as good as pocket queens we do have to be careful but at the same time he can continue with so many different draws flush draws gut shots open enders um he can continue with like a weak pair of nines like nine ten pair plus a gut shot He's got so much stuff that we should be trying to get aggressive here, especially with position. Put him to the test, charge him, and then if he ends up getting super aggressive on the turn in river, then we can fold knowing that this really wet board is not so good for pocket queens. But let's see what happens. 235 in the pot. Um, oh, first off, on the 976, yeah, we he hits 48% of the time. But we still have 69% equity. Things are looking good. Not the best flop in the world. We're not super happy. I mean, we would be happier if we had a queen of hearts in our range. A, a tiny bit happier. For one thing, it's a it's a heart blocker. And for another thing, we have the uh, back door, two card, back door, queen high, you know, third nut flush draw. So little backup equity if we had the queen of hearts. Uh, oh, so what's the action? 235. A tiny min donk bet. Either a bluff or he has a set and wants us to raise. Cap and hooks folded. Okay, good, good. Now, we're thinking about his range. What is making a tiny bluff, but more likely it's a blocking bet with some kind of draw or like a week seven or a week six with some kind of showdown equity and he doesn't know how to play it, basically. Um, if he had a super strong hand, set of sixes, sevens, nines, or even a, a two pair, not two pair, I'm sorry, uh, or even a straight, sets are better, he should be check-raising here. Because if we check, we're us, we're probably betting $1.75. If he has a set, he can raise it to a minimum, $3.50, or maybe $4.50, $4.75, and get extra value from us with his set on a possible overpair. Um, so because he makes a tiny bet and then calls, I am really treating this like a weakish hand to draws, obviously. If he would have come over the top of us, depending on how much I could have possibly folded if it was a really big bet, just knowing he probably has a really good hand as an unknown player versus versus us. Um, or I could have called like a smaller raise, like the smallest raise that he could have made it, we made it 225 more. He could have made it to 475, and I could have just called at 475 instead of going crazy and throwing the whole stack in there. But whoops, before the king hits, he does decide to just call. So what is min betting and then just calling? I am not going to say he has straights. I think they would min bet wanting a raise, getting the raise, and then coming over the top of us. So he does not have sets, uh, straights. He does not have sets either. Sets just want to get max value. Look how wet that board is. If we had, for instance, pocket tens or jacks, right? Maybe not jacks. If we had pocket tens, pocket eights, if we have 
um, pocket aces, kings, or queens, if he flopped a set or a straight, he can get a ton of value from us. So I see no reason at all for him to just bet and then call. Um, when there's a full, we started with full stacks right here. 100 big blind stacks. I mean, he should be going for max value. Two pairs. Now, he doesn't have anything really to be worried about. Sure, we could have 10-8 suited in our range that hit a straight that currently beats a two pair. But I think two pairs, because they aren't a set or better, they could be betting and then just calling right here. I'm going to give him at least these one, this one type of really strong hand for bet calling. So we'll give him the two pairs in his range. Over pairs, Jack, yep, those could be doing it because, of course, um, he could be feeling like testing the water, seeing where he's at with the over pairs, jacks, or tens. And because we raised, he could put us on queens, kings, or aces. And the jacks and tens can just uh, bet call here. Top pair. Totally. All of these. I mean, 9-5 has a gutter. 9-8 is a pair plus an open ender. 9-10, pair plus a gutter. Um, Jack-9 pair with some kind of like backup draw. Yeah, totally. They're bet calling. Pocket pair below. Open enders? Yeah, totally. They're going to be down here in open enders, but yes, pocket pair could be bet calling there. Um, all these mid pairs. They're all just the random seven. Some of them have draws, redraws. Um, I think for one street, what well, we did, we did raise big though. We raised pot basically, or we made it pot to go. 250, so... I mean, with just a seven, he's got to be scared. So I think maybe he's only calling with a seven with some kind of backup draw. So what we can do is not just put middle pairs in, but in some of these gut shots and over cards, a lot of sevens will come into play. So let's not put that in. Weak pairs right there. No ace high. No, no made hand. Okay. Flush draws. Totally bet calling. Even with the nut flush draw. Ace 10 suited. Ace 8 suited can still be just betting and calling. He could be kind of a cautious post-flop player. So let's put those in his range. Open enders. Uh, all the random eights. Some of them have pairs. Yeah, totally. Those are bet calling. There's no need. It's not like he's always betting and then three betting here. So we've got to put the open enders in his bet calling range. Gutter balls. Uh, those are all the random tens. All those weak fives. Um, You know, all those pocket fives are the only one really that I wouldn't mind just ditching from this. Because six five even has a pair plus a low gutter. And he could be the kind of player that just likes to call. Oh, ace five, I can get rid of too. So yeah, let's uh let's put the gut shots in, but let's ditch some of these the weaker gut shots here. Fives, six five, those are pair plus pair plus draw. Nine five is a pair plus on the low end. Queen five will take out king five, ace five. He could because it is an over card, the ace, the king, the queen. But then he only has three outs for the over card with four outs for the straight and the low end straight. Let's say those are folding. Let's say he has a little bit more sense than to stay in versus such a big bet or a big raise. Um, six, five pair. Yes, yes, yes. Nine, five pair. Yes. 10. And then the six. So pair plus the top end of the gutter. Okay. So all these random tens can be staying in 10 and all these are 10 gutter plus an over card. Yep. So we're actually only removing just a few gut shots. Not too many. Over cards in general, it's a big raise. Let's say he's folding those. I'm not going to put them in. Two card backdoor flushes. I don't see any reason to stay in versus our big raise with just a backdoor uh, flush draw. And all these random combos, we can say that those are in. So as we saw, his preflop range hit the flop 48% of the time. We are saying that he is staying in 54%, which makes total sense. We're right about the same hit percentage that he's staying in. I am down with this 244 combos. What was it? 54%, 244. As we can see now that we filtered his range down to all these decent draws, some good, some weak draws, and with, um, well, yeah, pocket eight still a draw plus a pair. Uh, we actually have 60% equity. So our equity went from preflop 76 on the flop to 69, and then now we're at 64, which we're still a favorite. Things aren't looking so bad right now. But we probably don't want to see a heart. We don't want to see an 8, a 10, or a 5 on the turn. Hey, king's not too bad. I mean, sure, he had a couple kings in his range, as we saw. He's got um, uh, all those different kind of gutters. Uh, flush draw with the kings in there. Um, pair plus a king. King 7, king 8. Oh, well, king's, king 8's not a pair plus. That's an open ender. Plus a king. Pair plus a king, king nine, king 10, gutter plus an overcard king. Yeah, so it does hit just a little bit, but probably not enough to really scare us here. 
King of Spades or equity goes up a little bit to 65. What was it? 63? Yeah, okay. 64 to 65%. It went up a tiny bit because it does hit some of his range. Not, not too much. And there's only one more card to come. So any kind of backdoor draws that he had, that didn't help. I don't think it helped any backdoor draws, right? Queen, Jack, Queen. Nope, didn't help any backdoor draws at all. Just helped draws that had a king in his range. Good, good. So what is the action? 735 in the pot. 3x behind. $20 behind. He checks, and then we check. Um, well, we'll think about his checking range in just, a ch in just a sec. But I can see us checking with queens. I bet with kings, we would bet. We would barrel here because of, look at all those draws that are willing to pay. All the different flush draws, those open enders, pair plus gutters. I mean, I don't think we have a set of kings. No, I don't think so. Aces? I think we should be betting with aces. It's, uh, it might be, yeah, it's probably a mistake checking with aces here. Queens, it's probably a mistake. I think we should barrel this, not knowing anything about them. I mean, I bet if we put out a just half pot, 360. Uh, I think that would be a good barrel bet. Charge him for all of his draws that are still in, that our queens are still ahead of most of those draws right there. Okay, so when he checks to us, what's he checking? Let's look at percentages here. Oh, no, let's look at combos. Um, dang it. Okay, hold on a second. So this is the thing. So we filter to this right here. Two card backdoor flushes. Straights. There's still two straights in his range. Why is that? 10, 8, and 8, 5. See, I've got to get rid of these hands from the range. Because as soon as we put the king in, bam, he has those two streets. 10, 8, 8, 5. So i got to find where are those hands. Pocket pair, top pair, over pair. Gut shot. Is it like a pair plus draw? Let's see here. 10, 8, and 8, 5. When do they get highlighted? 10, 7, no. Gut shot plus. I took them. Okay, gut shot. 10, 7, no. Open ender? No. Oh, because they're part of the flush draws. Lovely. So we need to remove 10, 8, and 8, 5 from those range. If we keep them in as flush draw possibilities, they remain as uh, they're still, they hit a straight. They hit a, they have a straight, but they also have a flush draw. So we need to hit accept. Now the straight's down to zero. Perfect right there. Um, mid pairs we don't have. Over cards, yeah, we're not. Okay, but that's what we got to worry about. Make sure those better cards are not in his range anymore. Perfect. Now the King of Spades hits. And we are at 66% equity on that King of Spades. You can see he doesn't have any straights or sets, which is perfect because we remove them from, uh, uh, from the flop. Good. So on the King of Spades, oh, that's right. He check, we check. Oh, that, sorry. So what is he checking here? I don't think... Is there anything that he has to come out firing on well, before the turn, before the river, I mean, on the king of spades? There's nothing that he has to fire. He's checking his entire range, hoping with his good hands, he's hoping that we barrel here. Let's say he um, he had a king eight. He suddenly hit a king. He still has an open ender. King eight of hearts even. What a great hand. King plus the open ender plus the flush draw. Um, he could still be calling because he doesn't have a great made hand or checking with a plan to check call because he doesn't have a made hand yet. There's nothing in his range that necessitates donk leading on this second street. Nothing. So he can have 100% of his range with the intent to check raise or check call or check fold some of it as well. So, like, really, I mean, we're just not going to... 100%, 234 combos. Yep. And now we checked behind, which... Could be pocket queens, could be aces, could be even... I mean, we could have opened with queen jack suited. It could be queen jack of diamonds that we have right now. Um, so, yeah. There, there's there's plenty of cards in my range which could check back on this uh, unhelpful turn. River gives us the ten of diamonds. So on the ten of diamonds, if we do have the pocket queens, great. We have 47% equity. But the thing is, that ten of diamonds just now completed a ton of draws. You can see that he went before that zero straights in his range plenty of straight draws 86 and then 71 combos 147 combos total now the ten of diamonds hits shabang he has 59 combos um of uh 
of uh, of straights in his range, which really hurts our pocket queens if that is what we have um, at this time. So let's see what happens. He bets oh a tiny buck fifty. Yeah, I'm calling. I mean queens, jacks, ten, even tens. I mean it's four to a straight. And I'm probably just calling with now a set of tens, aces. Totally four to the straight on the board. I can just call with tens. It's a tiny little bet. I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not happy with aces, jacks, queens. I'm not happy with raising for value here. I think it's a good. I think it's a good call. Um, I think we should have bet the turn though with those. So what is he making a tiny bet with? Is he really betting tiny with his straights? No, he's not. He's going for value. He's got to bet at least half pot. Screw that. He doesn't have a straight. No, sets. He suddenly turned, uh, rivered a set of tens, and he's only betting a buck fifty. There ain't no way. What is that? That's one fifth pot. That's only twenty percent pot. There's no way. He doesn't have a set. Um. Well, four to a straight, two pair could be betting small as a blocking bet. Would sets bet as a blocking bet? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Two pair. Are these betting as blocking bets? Because that's what I can. That's what I look at this as. Just a cheap bluff or a blocking bet to see showdown. King seven, king ten, king nine. Uh, does he have any king sixes? No, we took those out earlier. King sixes. It really doesn't feel like it. No, they could. Come to think of it, four to the straight on the board. He could just be hoping that, I don't know, that we call with just a random pocket queens like we have with two pair. And not raise him. Maybe maybe he's betting because if he gets raised, he's beaten by a straight. And he can fold his two pair. Instead of checking and then calling $4 on the river, maybe he's betting just as a blocking bet. So he has some kind of showdown value but is scared of the straight. That's what I'm going to put him on. Showdown value but scared of the straight. So top pair, yes. Pocket pair below, those pocket jacks, yes. Um, because if I don't have a king, then he's currently beating... Uh, maybe if I call with... If I call with a random 10, if I call with pocket 8, oh, pocket 8 has a straight. No, if I call with a random 9, if I call with a pocket 5s or 4s that don't think, that think he's just bluffing. Maybe he's making a really weird bet. But mid pairs, oh, 10s, yeah, those could be making this bet right here as a blocking bet just to see showdown. Weak pairs, they'll have pair plus gutters, pair plus draws, yeah. I'm not going to put these in his range. What are they? They're all sevens and fives. Oh no, and a nine. Okay. Maybe I'm getting nitpicky here. Let's take out his sixes, not in the range. His pair of sevens, let's say that those are not. Pair of nines is third pair. Those could be doing it. Let's remove the sevens. Those aren't making this bet. Nines are third pair, nines are third. Okay, so we're saying third pair are better is what he's doing this with. All right, so we've narrowed him down to 120 hands here. 56% um, of his prior streets range. All right, let's see what he's got. Ace nine and pocket, ooh, pocket aces. So club and a heart. Oh, we had a heart for the backdoor flush draw on the flop. Sweet, I like that. I don't like my turn check though. No, I don't like it. Um, and ace nine, as you can see up here, he has ace nine, um, uh, ace nine, which is just a mid pair right here in his range. Yep. So good. At least we narrowed him properly. It makes sense that he made that donk lead and then call back to flush draw top pair over card. If we had pocket Kings, if an ace comes on the turn, um, he, uh, he, he can get extra value with his two pair hand. Yeah. So the way he played, it makes total sense. And I understand making that tiny little blocking bet on the river. I don't think it's necessarily that I have to now raise for value. I think I think if I raise on the river, it's just I think I might get value from just a king, but I bet just a 10 is folding. Eights, of course, straights and beat me, so I'm not getting value. I think the only thing I'm getting value out of if I raise here is a king. King queen, king jack. Ace king if he called with ace king preflop. Yep, so I'm I'm down with not raising that river, just calling right there on a pretty wet board. Plenty of two pairs in his range too. Like like I said, he had lots of tens. He had ten seven, ten six, ten nine earlier that just now on the river hit two pair. 
which currently beats my one pair. So it's a hand worth calling, but not worth raising on the river. But I should have on that turn right here. Um, because that made the board a little bit more wet, and we currently still beat all one pair hands, and there's still plenty of draws in his range, I think I should have double barreled to charge him to catch his draws, which is what he had here. I mean, my checking behind just played right into his... Uh, I gave him exactly what I wanted, what he wanted with my check behind right there. But hey, we successfully narrowed him, and it makes sense. Top pair, good kicker um, on that kind of scary board versus a raise. That's what he donk led with. Alrighty, y'all. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate your study time with me today. Day 51 of 66. Come back next time for day 52. Take care.